I'll call this meeting to order. Uh, we have uh, met, we have a quorum, but uh, it is time to do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Sorry, I've got to see the... The agenda, sorry. You know, these old eyes. Okay. Um, how about if we do student perspectives? We have uh, the group from South is our... So hi everybody, I'm Jennifer Martinez, the Director of Student Activities at South, and so it brings me great pleasure this evening to present our Executive Board from the Student Council. So without any further ado, I'm gonna introduce them, and they're gonna talk about some good things that they do throughout the year for our community. Yes, come on up and introduce yourself. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Rakaya Johnson. I'm a senior and I am president. Oh, hi, I'm Ben Adams and I'm a senior as well and I am the vice president. This is awkward. Hi, I'm Carl Reifsteck III. I am also the vice president and I am a senior as well. Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm the treasurer. I'm a junior. Hi, my name is Erica, and I'm the SALC coordinator. I'm Rhea, I'm a junior, and I'm the communications officer. I'm Jill, I'm a junior, and I'm secretary. Okay, um, now that we've all introduced ourselves, I think we should just get started with what we're here to do today. So, um, just to tell you a little bit more about Student Council is that we're a student government run organization and we're pretty focused on making changes throughout our school and in the community that is based on student involvement. So throughout the year we do numerous activities that include the winter dance, homecoming tailgate for um, faculty members, we do different things like what we're talking about today, the Halloween fun fair and the daddy daughter dance. And all of our members are required to be committed to a meeting every week and different things after school. So there is no doubt that being in student council requires a lot of responsibility. But um, we would just like to thank you for allowing us to have this platform to tell you more about what we're gonna do. But um, without further ado, we'll have some of our other members focusing on one of the first events that we'll be talking about today. Um, so the Halloween Fun Fair is a uh, student-led um, event, and it takes place around Halloween um, after school in the field house. Um, it's a great time. Uh, all types of kids come uh, from like ages three to eleven uh, with their parents and family. Um, also, a lot of teachers bring their kids, so then they can introduce introduce their families to other teachers. It's just a great time, and. Um, each station is run by students from different organizations, so they have a lot of activities like games, uh, we run the bouncy houses, there's trick-or-treating, like we hand out candy, uh, there's fa face painting, arts and crafts, um, and just a lot of other fun things to do. Um, it's a free event, so everybody can come, and um, usually it's on October 24th, 2017. Uh, this past year we had 200 kids, or not uh, this past, well this past year we had 700 kids show up about Wow. And then, um, oh. which is a big improvement from the first year, which I'm, was about 15 years ago. <coughs> uh, yeah, so about 15 years ago when only 200 kids showed up. Mm -hmm. And then, next slide. Um, so going back to the activities, um, there's a lot of stuff to do. Um, a lot of clubs like to run games like beanbag tosses, there's storytelling, face painting, arts and crafts. Uh, there's two bouncy houses, one for the older kids and one for like the toddlers, and then there's uh, trick or treating. Hi, the Halloween Fun Fair provides a safe and fun environment for uh, for kids to go trick or treating, and allows them to them and their parents to have a fun and relaxing time. 
Um, so kind of like Ben was saying, it's a really good time for the kids because they're allowed to like run around and the parents can relax and watch the kids interact with the high schoolers. And it really just provides a safe spot where the kids can come, get in the Halloween spirit and all the um, high schoolers and everyone dresses up. And it's always fun seeing everyone and getting the holiday cheer. <laughs> I just have to say these students do such a great job putting on that Halloween fun fair and as the director of activities it gives me great pleasure when people from the community come up to me and just say how impressed they are with their students because every single student organization is acting as a mentor that day, interacting with those kids, playing games, joking around with them, taking pictures and parents from the community say that they save the day every year, that they look forward to it and that they can't wait to send their kids to our school. So that's just a testament of all the good work our students do. Okay, so the next event that we hold as a student council and a school is the Daddy-Daughter Dance. So a little bit about what it is. So who goes is the fathers in the community and their daughters ages 2 to 11, but it can also be older girls depending on like age groups of the teachers and families. Okay, so pretty much what there is there is there's a professional DJ, which is always really nice, refreshments, hair manicures, a keepsake photo and the usage of a photo booth and a chance to spend an evening with your little princess and also Disney princesses. So what normally happens is in the large gym, the DJ is there and the Disney princesses are there, which are kids from the choir who sing princess songs. And then in the small gym, there's tables set up with like nail polish and hair clips and stuff. And then the high schoolers who are also dressed in like tux, like boys are dressed in tuxes and girls are dressed in dresses. They do makeup for the kids like really simply and it just makes them feel special and like really they really Really enjoy it. Um, the cost is only $25 per father if they pre-register and it's $30 at the door so it's affordable and Kelly go ahead. Um, so oh, I don't know Kate say that say that um, This event is our way of uh, just um, contributing to the uh, school-wide philanthropy, and this year it's longevity. And normally we raise about three to five thousand dollars for uh, the the philanthropy, so that's pretty good as for an event. Um, this event takes place like well, this year it's March 10th, but somewhere around March, around uh, Valentine's Day, February-ish, and it starts at 6 p.m. So we believe the Daddy Daughter Dance is very beneficial to the community because it's a place that, like Erica said about the Halloween Fun Fair, kids are and their families are able to come and feel safe in an environment that they can have fun in. And also, it's really nice for like the kids to come and see high schoolers who are like involved and like want to help them have fun. And it'll probably like we set a very good example for them when it comes to helping the community and being able to make a difference with the situations that we're in. Okay, so overall you can see that these different events are basically a way of bringing everyone in our community together. Um, at Downers Grove South and in the District 99 community, we believe that it is important that we see teenagers interact with parents and their young children because in an age of so much social unrest, it is important that we're all together in times like these. So um, thank you for listening to us today, and hopefully you learned a little bit more about what Student Council brings to the table. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah? I do. So uh, how do you pay for the uh, Halloween, uh, uh, Halloween fun fair? That's a good question. Um, all of the clubs, like, I'm not quite sure how it works because I'm a student, but for the fun fair, um, the clubs have their own booth, so they kind of like donate that their table and their activity, and then um, all that is like candy, so I'm pretty sure that comes from the activities department. So that's from the activities department, so that's how it's freed for the community. There's no renting the bouncy house and things like that. Or, you know, cost. Student council so, too. So yeah. there's a combination. So when it comes to the budget, student council does various fundraisers throughout the year, and so the activities office and student council we work closely together and kind of divvy up some of those costs. But we like to invite them in, and it's an inexpensive event to yeah. bring the families in to let them right. just really bring that community together. And what a great opportunity that we have to invite everybody in so that they can see our school, meet our students, and mm -hmm. parents, like I said, have that safe place to be. So. so we've been doing this for several years. Show of hands, did any of you come to the Halloween fun fair when you were younger? No? How about the daddy-daughter daddy -daughter dance, maybe? 
I know all, all my all my daughters are. I have three daughters all at South this year, and I brought them to the daddy daughter dance when they were young. So um, so it's something that's been going on for quite a while here, and it's it's a great experience. So so thank you for doing it. Um, and, anybody else have any? I too have three daughters and um, two of three have have attended the daddy daughter dance and the third one probably will be in March so nice. uh, we really enjoy it yeah and uh, yeah it's, it's a nice evening it's kind of like a date with, right. with your daughter and it's it's a lot of fun and you know they they feel very special so it's uh, thank you for doing that any other questions I, I had one what is longevity it, I've not heard of it as the fundraiser. So longevity is going to be our philanthropy project this year and every year we vote and so last spring we voted and students and staff members had an opportunity to submit a video or write up like a little paragraph to present their ideas and then we voted. And so actually our fine arts secretary, Elaine, um, Eileen, sorry, Maroney, she is a cancer survivor and she was impacted by lung cancer. And so she put forward that video and the students and staff voted on it. And so Longevity is an organization, a charitable organization focusing on lung cancer. So we'll be tying white ribbons around trees this Wednesday because it's um, Lung Cancer Awareness Month and white is the color of lung cancer. Okay. So everything that we'll be doing this year will be focusing on raising money for that. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, I, it's, it's not an organization that I'd ever heard of before. Yeah, I so hadn't thank heard of you. it either until I <coughs> brought it forward and she's worked closely with them throughout her process and her journey um, as she's been impacted by lung cancer. Well, good. So, yeah. Well, thank you. So we're thank happy you. to help a uh, good cause and one of right. our own Absolutely. Um, staff members. Absolutely. Right. All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, the student thank council you. is doing some great things. So we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Um, students, do you have any, uh, who wants to go first? <laughs> so am I just talking about like what's been going on at South? Yes, yes, Terms just, questions. uh, and questions you might have or comments or concerns? Um, well, I know initially when I told a lot of my friends that I was here, I was like, you know, tell me what you have problems with or questions. And I know um, something that came up a lot was like the rodent problem we have at South. It can be kind of uh, distracting. I know like yeah. um, we definitely like can't eat in a lot of classes because like we have rodents and like um, I remember last year like on Snapchat like there was a rat in an AP Psych class and it was like running around and everyone was freaking out. So I know that's something that's kind of hmm. Definitely have to look into that. I mean, I understand it's like an older building and it's kind of something that's like a given, but like if we could get that under control. Under control. Yes, uh, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, gosh, didn't know. Yeah. So you have Definitely. you have other students that are that are seeing lots of rats or <laughs> well, I mean especially now that like the weather is getting colder like it's more likely that they're going to be there but I mean like it's like kind of a known thing I guess I don't know to me it is but maybe not to everyone hmm okay well, thank you thanks that's definitely something that uh, we'll to we need to <laughs> took a note <laughs> take okay. care of <laughs> like <laughs> ASAP <laughs> Okay. Yeah, um, that anything was the else? main one, and then I don't have any other like questions or anything right now. Okay. Thank All right. You. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was just gonna share uh, like highlights of like our week basically. So snowball just happened at North, and um, I know a lot of my friends that went have just been commenting on it, saying that um, they would love to continue to do it. I know some of the people who are like the leaders, and they just say that so many people like opened up and so many people really like share their experiences so um a lot of them were definitely encouraging it and they want to find um even more ways to like advertise it to freshmen and get the idea out so snowball was one of the things um another thing was our girls volleyball team were sectional champions so that was definitely a big accomplishment because that's something that hasn't happened in a long time 
and um, I think they it was super sectionals that they lost against uh, was St. Charles. St. Charles yeah St. Charles um, so that was a really good game but overall they had a really good season and then also our boys um, cross country team won state so that's just a really good thing for our school um, I know that that hasn't happened in a long time as well and I know that Mr. Sipple was just extremely happy he was just extremely happy to see that happen um, and they have such a good group of boys I mean they're getting trained so well so that's something that really that's really important and um, one more thing was this week we just did the we are one picture and I don't know if you guys saw that but basically um, we had everyone drinks we had a double seventh period and everyone came out to the football field and um, I think it was Mr. Teague that like set up the letters for us but every but we spelled out the letter one um, or the number one sorry in like the football field and it was just something that um, we wanted to do to kind of bring more people together and just like express so, like a sort of unity especially with like everything that's going on right now um, another thing that like came up with like our school is students are really happy that um, we're supporting each other in more events. So we have Endzone, and they basically send out tweets and let kids know that like certain things are going on. And um, the student support, especially since you don't have to pay to get into games and you can just show your ID, like that that change, I think, definitely brought in more students to to games, especially with like basketball season coming up. That's always super popular. And I know that the stands are gonna be packed because um, it was so nice for volleyball seeing the amount of people that would come out or like people even took the fan bus um, to state for the boys so just the amount of like fans that we have coming out is like really it's a really good look for our school and it looks good so yeah so like our snowball is coming up this weekend and I'm a leader for it and we have over 115 participants registered so we're really excited about that, and it always goes really well. And then um, also Chris Heron spoke, and I know um, lots of people that like I talked to were really impacted by his speech, and he's such a great speaker, and um, he's really moving, so I think like that was also really good. And then um, also our fall play, Anne Frank, was this past weekend. That also went really well. Um, everyone really did a good job. Um, yeah, and then also our girls cross country team was in fifth place or got fifth place in state, so that was also really good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yes. Yeah, I was yes. just gonna add on. A lot of people were impacted by the Chris by Chris Heron coming in, um, and I think that's just super important because there were like a lot of students that I personally knew that were really really like listening in, and I know that. Um, it had like a very emotional effect on some of the students so just for him to be there and kind of speak and like direct us in such a way where we could listen was super important and I think that's it's great that he was able to come and that we have you know funding for that because I know that some schools like aren't as fortunate and aren't able to have that so it's like great that we were able to have him come in yes it was Mm -hmm. And the foundation helped pay oh, for yeah. them to come, so that that's was great. a good thing too. Um, okay, all right. Well, thank you, ladies. It sounds like there's some really interesting mm -hmm. things going on at both North and South High. And I was at the um, um, cross country cross country rally, okay. and so that was, oh yeah, that was that so was good. That was really yeah. Really neat. The band, mm -hmm. the, the the fan bus, and then the the police escort through town. Yeah, that was just incredible. So, mm -hmm. it was really a wonderful event. So, and I think that they're running again this weekend. They are. Oh yeah, so for they're, nationals. And, um, they're hoping to qualify. If they will qualify for nationals. We're hoping they win. <laughs> yeah. Um, in Indiana on Sunday, it's the Nike Cross Regional um, event, and then if they then after that the first week in December, they would be in Portland, Oregon. Or, Portland. Uh, nationals. Okay. So, so going into the state meet, they were ranked fifth in nationals. Yeah. So we're gonna keep an eye on that, and you'll keep us posted on how they do, and hopefully there'll be another rally. So. It was fun. Yes. Yes. It was great. All right. Thank you, ladies. Uh, the next uh, thing we have is uh, the master facility plan.
<coughs> community <coughs> engagement update. Yep, so we've been having a few pieces of mail going out from the District 99 office. Um, as you know, we sent out the letter, we sent out this Q&A to everybody in our community, inviting them to the meetings that we held. Um, we held four meetings in October, two at North, two at South on Saturdays and Thursday night. They were not as popular as the Halloween fun fair. Um, <laughs> oh, no ball at South, so apparently. Um, we had about uh, 80 or so people um, come to those meetings. And it was great because um, you know people who have no connection to our schools whatsoever came to take the time and learn about our plans and um, go on tours. So we're thankful for those people to come out. Also thankful for all the staff who took extra time to man those days, thanks to Ed and Janice for um, supporting those efforts. So now we have out on the street the public opinion survey. So we've received over 3,000 at this point. Um, so just gathering that feedback and starting to tabulate that and we'll have um, more information very soon um, to report to everybody. So it's a really exciting time for our district and um, to hear what the community has to say about these changes. So um, that's pretty much where we are right now. Was, yes. was the survey mailed to all households as as was the original document? Yes, they went by postal code. Um, okay. So it doesn't match up perfectly with our map. And I, I did, you know, do some postings on Facebook next door if you have not received it um, to let us know. So we're looking for those um, to be popped in the mail at the end of this week or so. But okay. if people do, did not receive one, personally, I have not received one. So still I, following I up with either. the post office. Yeah, okay. So that's another postal route that I'll okay. ask about. So okay. actually, accosted my carrier today <laughs> so asking him about it he said oh no you should have done that last week i said i know so um, so <laughs> yes i'm yes. fully aware yes yes, yes. So i'll be Full following up on that so you know reliability isn't 100 percent, but um, you know we want to hear from people regardless of when it comes through our doors i'd say so um for those who did did not receive it or may have received it and thrown it away but now want to respond can Correct. they can they do it online they, we do not have the it online. We okay. do have a picture of it and says email communications at csd99.org okay. for a copy of it. And okay. we'll All drive right. to their house and, and deliver one okay. in person. <laughs> right. Looking to hear from everybody. And it's, we have heard from many people. It's, it's impressive that we've got over 3,000 um, mm -hmm. yeah. back already. Mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, so I'm feeling pretty good about this being something that it's going to be instructive for us in some way. Mm -hmm. And we were told between eight and seventeen percent is a good yield. So, forty-four thousand were were sent out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we okay. think so. We're we're getting close to good. Uh, a good read. Good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Very good. good. Thank you, Jill. Thank you. And then, um, when will you be reporting on the uh, results of the survey? Well. Um, Probably at the next meeting, November 20th, but oh, I need okay. to confirm with Hank, okay. who's not here today. Okay. So I'm pretty sure that we'll be able to, to do that at that point. Great. Well, I hope so. Yeah. Because yeah. I need some time to. Time's a, mm -hmm. yeah. a going. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, we, I, don't want the, I don't want the information at the last minute. Absolutely not. No. It'll... And you're collecting okay. surveys through Thursday, is that right? Yep. So we, we asked, please put it in the mail by Thursday. So we'll continue to collect it early next week. So we have our second or third, rather, Citizen Task Force meeting next Tuesday. Um, so we'll share some information at that point, but with the board before that point as well. Thank you, Jill. Always keep you posted. Thank you, board. Right. Now then, our next uh, thing is... Okay. Our continuing okay. education. Uh, it is on Every ESSA. Student like Success Act. Yeah. ESSA. 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 So we are going to continue looking at some of the factors. You know that we've been doing this pretty much every meeting. We looked last time um, at some data relative to the Distinguished Scholar and the College Career Readiness designation. Tonight we're going to look at the College Career Ready ELA indicators. And we're specifically going to look at advanced placement, English coursework, in other words, grades and test scores. And then we will look back at ACT reading and English scores. And then in the coming months, some of the same things you've seen the last couple of meetings. So just as a refresher, there's a couple of ways that students can get that college and career ready designation. One way is through the GPA and attendance, which we talked about uh, I think two meetings ago. 
The other way involves this chart, and that's where they have to have one indicator for ELA and one indicator for math. They also have to identify a career interest, and they have to have um, three indicators by basically by senior year. So we're going to focus tonight on the uh, left side of the chart where it says ELA must meet one. A couple of these really do not relate. You may remember we talked about IB before. We don't offer an IB program. We do have an AP program. So we're going to talk a little bit tonight just focusing on English about AP exams in English, about advanced placement course grades of A, B, and C, and then we're going to look specifically at the ACT, those students that scored an 18 or higher in English or a 22 or higher in reading. We'll come back to the SAT in an upcoming meeting and we'll come back to math as well. So gathered uh, five years of data, which I thought was interesting as it really shows the increase in the focus we've had on AP course enrollment um, and an increase obviously in those students that are testing. Um, and obviously you can look at each, each year, mm -hmm. but students can meet the criteria either way. They can meet the criteria by having grades of A through C or by a test score of three to five. Again, we're waiting for some of these rules to come into place. They're in rulemaking right now. So we don't know if it's an A through C both semesters, but that's the way we pulled the data, just to be on the safe side. Um, but the three to five seems to be fairly clear. And then we looked at how many students um, met either criteria, one or the other, in some cases it's both, obviously, and what the percent of our student body looks like. And so you can see each year that number is increasing. And that's just one way, one indicator, um, advanced placement. We have two advanced placement English courses, by the way. We have at our junior level, AP language, and then at the senior level, AP literature. So it's either course. We also looked at specifically honing in on English. Just went back three years, did that for a couple reasons. Um, looked at the ACT because remember another indicator is a score of 18 or higher in English, 22 or higher in reading. Is it and or or? It's and. Okay. So the reason why this is really important is because you will note that for the first two years, and I could have gone back more years, we have the data for more than a decade easily, um, but you'll see a, a reduced number of students testing. And the reason is, is because the ACT is no longer part of the state assessment. Now it's the SAT. So I wanted to point that out, but I also wanted to point out the incredible percent of students that are meeting this standard. I mean, if you look at our class of 2018, almost 75% of our students meeting just that, that standard. And remember, they only need one on that side of the chart. So, and we've seen that increase. Obviously, we have a smaller group taking the test, and it's those students who elect or opt to take that test. Um, but you can see, obviously, the increase. And even when it was required, we were looking at averages right, hovering right around 60% of meeting both the reading requirement as well as the English requirement. So I think that's some impressive data when three quarters of our students already met it, when there's numerous indicators where they can meet it, and 75% of our students have met it just from this one indicator. So tonight we looked at advanced placement English, the AP Lang and Literature basically courses and their grades and the testing as well as the ACT reading and English scores. We'll be looking next time and continue working on the SAT data. We'll look at the SAT data for English and for math, and then we will look at the college ready indicators for math, which is also ACT and AP data, and then continue through attendance programs of study and co-curriculars. Um, some of those will come later as we work through as we're hoping to get more information about how they actually will look, for example, at attendance. Because that's, that's not very clear now. Um, so some of those we're gonna wait, hopefully, until we have a little bit more information. Okay. Does any anybody have any questions? questions? Okay. All right.
Right. Um, now we come to our, our discussion on the um, I, IASB, I get tongue-tied on that, <laughs> um, res, uh, resolutions. Um, Mike, do you have any? Uh, they were in, in your in board docs, so I see you brought it up again. Um, so I, I'm, I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement with the recommendations from ISB, and that's the way I plan on voting, unless you tell me otherwise. Okay. Yeah, I really didn't see much of anything to argue about. No. You know, I don't know. Did is there any other discussion? If something occurs to you, let me know. Uh, well, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But uh, got till you know I actually show up to. To, to vote, so <laughs> should be what next weekend, right? So yeah. not this coming, but the following. So. Yeah, yeah. It'll be here before we know it. Yep. Yeah. All right. Does uh, okay. Um, we have a reception of visitors. Do we have any visitors? All right. Then I won't go through the spiel. <laughs> All right. Um, well, looks like. Does anybody have a motion? I move we adjourn. Second. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? So there's, there's, we will see here. you guys on our next uh, meeting is uh, November 20th, I believe, okay. at uh, 7.30. Yeah. Yeah. So we will see you all. Did you see the agenda on the 20th? Yeah. 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 We're done.